So hello, hello, hello. I would like to uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Sybil Boast, and I would like to welcome you to the Newark Liberty International Terminal One Redevelopment Community Outreach Office. We are I especially am extremely excited for you to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a proud resident of the city of Newark, and I couldn't be happier to serve you and serve our community. I would also like to introduce members of our outreach team if they are in the room. Natasha Lucia and Ray Cottle, they may be downstairs somewhere. Yes, they may be working. <laughs> They're hiding in the back. Hey, in the back, Natasha Lucia, Lucia and Ray Cotto. Um, I would also like to thank the electeds that are in the room. So I would like to thank, of course, Assemblywoman Tucker, um, our, our freeholders that are here, as well as our council people that are here in the room as well. And here's L L Natasha. She's another member of our outreach team. So generally, we look forward to engaging with the local small businesses here in the city of Newark. I want you to know that I am your advocate when it comes to anything Terminal One. I hope to be your advocate for future projects with the Port Authority as well. At this time, I'd like to introduce our executive director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Rick Hahn. Uh, thank you very much, Sybil. It really is a pleasure to be here, and I do want to start out by uh, thanking Congressman Payne and Mayor Baraka and their public colleagues for, for joining us. Uh, this, is a, this is truly a big moment uh, for, the, for the Port Authority. Uh, the Terminal One project is uh, one of our major commitments. We are making a historic high levels of investment in our airports. Uh, the Terminal One project is, we believe, the largest design-build project that the Port Authority has ever done in New Jersey. And we are committed to two things as we proceed. First, we are committed that Terminal One and Newark, as well as our other airports, are world-class infrastructure that provide a world-class passenger experience. And what we have to acknowledge on both sides of the river is that our facilities have historically been a long, long way from that. So we have a ways to go, both in terms of rebuilding these facilities into world-class brick and mortar, but we also want world-class passenger experience, and we're committed to that. But that's only one part. The other part is what's represented by this office, which is an absolute total commitment to work with the communities in which our facilities exist. We recognize that our facilities, first of all, can impose burdens and inconvenience on local communities, but at least as importantly, we want the benefits from a business point of view, from a hiring point of view, from an opportunity point of view to accrue to the communities around our facilities. This space symbolizes that, but we recognize that it, it extends far beyond that, which is we have to deliver. We have to up our game, and we have to see that business goes to small businesses, MWBE businesses in Newark, in the local community, and we have to assure that as many benefits as possible do accrue to the community. So I'm delighted to be here uh, with my colleagues. Uh, you will, I uh, actually just would like to recognize a uh, comment on two. There are many here, and I apologize for not going through all of, uh, all of the Port Authority executives who are here. But Huntley Lawrence, who you will hear from later, is the director of aviation and has been com totally committed to both sides uh, in terms of assuring not only world-class facilities, but benefits accruing to the community. And Michael Messiah, where's Mike? He's hiding in the back. <laughs> uh, Michael is uh, the first uh, chief diversity and inclusion officer uh, of the Port Authority. Uh, we appointed him a year and a half ago. And uh, he, in partnership with his colleagues, is fully committed to the uh, community development part of our agenda. Finally, I just want to say that the chairman of the board of the Port Authority, Kevin O'Toole, uh, a, uh, a wonderful uh, colleague. We have uh, forged a very strong 
working relation, wanted very much uh, to be here, but uh, he is unfortunately ill and is not able to join us. So I am here to express these thoughts on behalf of both of us. So with that, I would like to turn the podium over to Congressman Payne and welcome him to the office. Thank you, and good afternoon. It's a real honor and a privilege for me to be here uh, today on a, um, what is a um, wonderful start of a journey that I hope is fruitful for both uh, this community and the Port Authority. You know, I told um, Rick in the back room there, I said, it's good to see him on this side of the river. He said, yeah, it's, his passport and visa don't expire uh, very quickly, but um, it's good to have him over here. Uh, also, um, to Jenny Davis, who does an outstanding job uh, for the Port Authority, uh, keeping me abreast of the situations that are going on uh, with the development and um, any other issues uh, that the Port Authority has. Just like to thank her and also not initially realizing who uh, Miss Bose was. And um, I knew her mother very well, um, was a, a leader um, back uh, when I was trying to learn this trade and watching her in Irvington. And so it's really delightful to know that you are a part of this community and have grown up here and will be running this office. Um, says a lot about what's going on here. I'm really happy to celebrate the opening of the Port Authority's uh, outreach office uh, for Terminal 1 redevelopment. Across the country, people are calling for better investments and greater innovation uh, in transportation infrastructure. And well, uh, this is a great start, and the Port Authority appears to be leading the way. Uh, but building and innovating is not enough. Uh, it is imperative that the infrastructure opportunities be extended to minority contractors, women entrepreneurs, and small businesses. This community outreach office is a step in the right direction and will extend, extend Terminal One redevelopment opportunities to local minority-owned, women-owned, and disadvantaged small businesses. I've worked with the Port Authority for years to help extend opportunities to local businesses, and I'm proud to be joining uh, you today for this opening. Infrastructure development cannot be successful without extending opportunities to local businesses, small businesses, and businesses owned by women and minorities. And this community office will help the Port Authority continue to grow opportunities in connecting with people that are in and of this community and are just looking for an opportunity to compete on a certain level. So thank you for having me here today and look forward to continue to working with uh, everyone here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman Payne. I would also like to invite uh, our mayor, who has been a longtime supporter of the Port Authority, up to give a few words. Thank you. <laughs> that made me smile. <laughs> I want to uh, first thank the Assemblywoman Tucker for being here and Councilwoman uh, LaMonica McGuire from the Central Ward for being here with us as well. Uh, it's important um, that you guys are opening up an office here. We're talking about uh, 45 million passengers coming through this, through this airport in which almost 60% of those passengers originate in the state of New Jersey. $30 billion of economic activity that happens in that airport. Uh, you know, it's important for that money and that wealth to be used by the residents of this community and this area. Uh, if we even got 1% of that economic uh, development and growth activity that happens in the airport, uh, we would be uh, far better off than we are now. Uh, so there's a few things that you know, makes me happy about today, opportunity one, it gives us a, a chance to focus in on Newark in this region to, to help the Port Authority see 
that Newark has opportunity and folks here that can benefit from the opportunities at the airport, at the Port Authority, period. I mean, we've been fighting for a long time, one, just to keep our name on the airport. Uh, <laughs> I mean, two, two to, two to at least to, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, that, that at least we have a message that people know when they land uh, that they're actually in Newark and not New York. Um, and that there's a message that makes that clear uh, to our residents. Those are just low-hanging fruit, and I think that those things are, we're, we're moving on those things, uh, thankfully, and, and uh, you know, the port and the, uh, the airport are beginning to see that those things are very important to us, and are moving on that. Uh, recently, we just opened up a, 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 a kind of display uh, in the terminal so people can see the things that Newark has to offer. Uh, we, we, we gonna take that even a step further, right? Uh, third, I mean, it's important to make sure that the jobs that are originating at the port, that uh, uh, many of those jobs go to Newark residents and to go to folks in this area. I mean, that's uh, a no-brainer and those low-hanging fruit and those things that, that could happen. And then the procurement dollars, which uh, the executive director talked about, the procurement dollars specifically for this project and many projects are used for small businesses and businesses in and around the city of Newark, uh, minority-owned businesses, uh, in this community, women-owned businesses in this community. Uh, we would love to see, uh, you know, Black Swan Espresso in Terminal 1, right? We would love to see, uh, you know, opportunities for, you know, it's a shameless shout-out for the coffee. <laughs> we, 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 oh, she's in the back. Oh, I didn't know that. We would love to see businesses like that uh, that represent uh, African-American, minority, women-owned businesses that originate in Newark in that airport. Uh, it would make me smile to see uh, those businesses in the airport and not just sky caps. And, that's, uh, uh, and I think that we're moving in that direction. And I thank the Port Authority and Executive Director for understanding that's what we need and want. And, and, and we're going to work together to make those things happen. And this office is an opportunity to get, to get us there. Uh, and then the, the, the last piece of it, of course, is um, opportunity for us to participate completely and directly in all of the economic growth that's happening in and around the airport uh, uh, collectively to understand that the airport is a part of the city of Newark and there is no Newark and then the Newark airport. There is no Newark and then Port Authority and we're all working together to make sure that this region is benefiting from one of the uh, top economic assets in the, t in the entire state of New Jersey that the, the state benefits from it, but, but mostly Newark and this region uh, benefits from it. And when I speak of Newark benefiting, I'm, I'm indirectly and directly speaking about the state because the state goes as Newark goes. So we are grateful. This is a huge step forward for 300,000 residents of this city, the hundreds of thousands of residents uh, in Elizabeth, uh, the people in this region will benefit from this growth from this development. We look forward to it progressing and Newark uh, opening an office here is the first step to doing that. So thank you, Port Authority. Thank you, the Executive Director. We uh, expect a whole lot of things to happen out of this. God bless you. And last but not least, we're going to bring up our Director of Aviation, uh, Huntley Lawrence, to close out the program. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be here. Uh, Congressman Payne, Mayor Brocker, Executive Director Cotton. As the Director of Aviation, doing great infrastructure projects is important. But what's more important than that is really great collaboration and teamwork, working with communities, working with partners so that they all truly uh, experience the benefit of the development that we are bringing to, uh, to that community. This particular um, office represents our commitment to ensure that we improve collaboration and partnership with communities. You've talked about um, the things that we would like to accomplish um, with this office, but the truth is that we're very serious about collaboration and uh, partnerships, in including uh, business development, including looking at contracting opportunities, also job placement. We have uh, many other resources in the community, like the CAO, but we recognize we've got to bring all of those resources together in an effective way in a single place so that we can provide opportunities um, for, for the folks that are in the communities. I want to thank all of um, you for being here today. I also want to especially thank 
um, Jenny Davis and her team in bringing this, um, this community center uh, together. They've done a, a wonderful job, and we recognize that it's not really about the office, but it's really about um, what we do with this office and how we partner with communities. That's how we're going to be measured in the end, and we expect to, um, to deliver for you towards that end. So with that, I want to thank you and um, turn it over to, uh, to Sybil. <laughs> And if you don't know, our director is from Essex County. <laughs> yes. All right. So similar to uh, what our mayor said, of course, we would like to have uh, a taste of our city and a little flavor of our city in the airport. So uh, uh, concluding this program, we have some samples for you. So in the corner right behind you, we have Ulala's empanadas, which are delicious. They're right downtown Newark on Market Street. In the rear of the office, we have some delicious sweets. Hopefully no one's on a diet for Lent, um, but they're Tony's minis. Then a little further back, we have Smitty and Moe's. They have some jerk chicken strips for you and a little bit of mac and cheese. And then in the way back, we have uh, Black Swan Espresso. Black Swan Espresso, the best coffee ever. They have made it for two years, about a block away from Starbucks. They're excellent. Please try their coffee, even if you're not a coffee drinker. <laughs> all right? So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.